G'day everyone, finally I am back at Sydney International Airport. First time flying overseas for two years and two months. So I'm flying an airline today that I've never flown before, Malaysian Airlines. I'm on flight MH140, flying from Sydney to Kuala Lumpur. I'm in business class on board the A330-200. So first time flying, now masks are mandatory, so let me mask up. Mandatory in the airport and on the aircraft. So let's go check out the flight experience. One week before Easter and the start of the school holidays, I was expecting Sydney International Airport to be bustling. But there were only eight flights leaving Sydney on this Friday evening. International travel has a long way to recover to pre-pandemic times. Check-in at Malaysian Airlines was quick and straightforward with a separate queue for business class passengers. The airport had been quiet until I got to security. It took more than one hour to pass through security with this huge queue of people. Only three x-ray machines were in operation. Good work, Sydney Airport. Once past security, I headed to the business class lounge to relax until my flight boarded. I was expecting to get access to the excellent Qantas business class lounge as Malaysian Airlines is a member of the One World Alliance. But Malaysian Airlines business class passengers only have access to the Plaza Premium Lounge. This lounge is only small, with a bar and a small selection of complimentary food. Due to the delay getting through security, I got to the lounge at 8.50pm and they told me the lounge would be closing in 10 minutes at 9pm. This only gave me time for a cold beer and a quick snack. I didn't want to eat too much as I was saving room in my belly for the food experience on Malaysian Airlines. The lounge was right next to gate 24 where my flight was departing from. With the lounge closing at 9pm and my flight not boarding until 9.30, I had 30 minutes wait at the gate until the flight opened for boarding. There was priority boarding for business class passengers and any passengers travelling with children. Along the left, there are staggered single seats along the windows. In the middle of the cabin, there are two seats together. And on the right hand side, the rows alternate with two seats, one seat, then two seats. The seats were really comfortable and gave you plenty of privacy. And you definitely can't complain about the leg room. You can stretch your legs right out and plenty of room at the end for my large feet. The seats recline into a total lay flat mode, which allowed me to get about five hours sleep, which is more than I usually get. There are plenty of small storage areas to store your personal items, as well as the expected USB port and a universal power adapter to charge and power your devices. There is a nice lever amenities kit with all the standard grooming products. The crew also hand out a hygiene kit which contains a mask and alcohol wipes. Now it is fairly standard on a business class flight to be offered a welcome drink, usually a nice glass of champagne or a glass of juice, but on this flight the crew only handed out a bottle of water. Now onto the takeoff video, and after this I will show you the entertainment system and then the meal after takeoff and the full breakfast before landing. The entertainment system was loaded with a huge selection of movies, TV shows and music. As this was a night flight, I just watched one movie during dinner time and then tried to get some sleep. The flight map is an old static system rather than the current interactive systems, but still was good for checking the progress of the flight. After that super fast takeoff, the crew started the meal service with a drink. They had on board my favourite Japanese beer, Asahi and the crew were not backwards in bringing me more without even asking. Then a trolley was brought around with some delicious Malaysian satay with a choice of chicken or beef. 
these were really delicious. Yes, please. Yeah, mix, mix please. Yeah. I had a mix of both the chicken and the beef. They did offer me to have a second serving of the satay, though I thought a full dinner service was being served, so I refused the second serving. I was most disappointed when the crew told me they would only serve snacks after the satay, and then they would serve a full breakfast meal two hours before landing. I ended up having this bread roll with salmon, which was a bit dry. I really should have asked for more satay. I managed to get about five hours sleep and the crew woke me up for the breakfast service. This was a very satisfying meal, starting with fresh fruit pieces, some apple juice and some yogurt with berries. They also brought a croissant and a cold piece of toast. I would have been happy with just this for breakfast, but they then brought a large plate of Malaysian fried noodles with chicken roll. This was so good. Not often I have fried noodles for breakfast, but I did enjoy every bite of this breakfast meal. So how was this flight? I did really enjoy flying with Malaysian Airlines. I earned Qantas frequent flyer points and status credits as Malaysian Airlines are part of the One World Alliance. I was slightly disappointed they didn't serve a welcome drink or a full meal service after takeoff, but the full breakfast made up for this. Overall this flight was great, but I was supposed to have a Malaysian Airlines connecting flight flying from KL to Bali just four hours after I landed. This flight was cancelled and Malaysian Airlines scheduled me on a flight the next day, which would have meant spending 28 hours in Kuala Lumpur Airport. I had phoned their call centre two times, first time on hold for 45 minutes, second time on hold for 30 minutes. End result, Malaysian Airlines couldn't help me. They could not get me on an earlier flight. When I asked if they would give me food and drink vouchers for a time in Kuala Lumpur Airport or pay for accommodation, they said they do not do this. I ended up purchasing tickets on Singapore Airlines to fly KL to Singapore and then Singapore to Bali, an extra $400. At Sydney Airport, the check-in staff couldn't help me either. Even at Kuala Lumpur Airport, their ticket office said I would have to call the call centre to get a credit for the flight. I emailed them five days ago and yet to get a reply. I will keep trying. If no credit comes forward, this will probably be my last time flying Malaysian Airlines. Enough said. Enjoy the raining landing into Kuala Lumpur Airport.